So I went back to LA and and tried to be a Catholic and work in Hollywood. And that balance never worked for me. Yeah. Uh, and uh, at, being a faithful Catholic. <laughs> yeah, being a faithful Catholic. Uh, and you know what motivated me, what kept me going was this idea of the clandestine war. Right? That was the, the narrative that we all shared. Sure. We're fighting a clandestine war. We mm -hmm. have a secret thing that we can tell nobody about. So we don't talk about the faith and we keep it hidden and we'll, we'll be subversive and we'll, we'll talk about natural principles. And, we'll, and so that was this, there was a, a pleasure in that, but it didn't sit right with my conscience. And there were plenty of times that it really didn't sit right with my conscience. Um, and it just nagged at me. Um, but I kept believing that narrative that we're going to somehow shift the culture in Hollywood, that it only takes a few. And if, even if we built a big enough thing and we sold enough shows and we sold a show to Netflix and we produced a movie with Selena Gomez, we did these things that somehow the tide would turn. Right. Um, and I just stopped believing that one day. And you can't just do what you do uh, in Hollywood. Right? Oh, yeah, I'm you, pretty sure. That's I've had no offers, just <laughs> for the record. <laughs> Universal, MGM, and, nobody's called. And I've had none since, uh, <laughs> since my video. So, in fact, I had a, a really nice two-sentence uh, email from my manager who said, I saw your video. Um, it was nice knowing you, and, and I'm always here for you if you need me. You're no longer on the roster. So, um, yeah. but, but I get to be honest now. Sure. Right? And... My conscience. Yeah, you couldn't have done this interview five years ago. Of course not. Uh, and, you know, I, I had people ask. People would find out I'm Catholic and say, hey, can you come speak at my parish? And the terror of thinking that someone's going to pull their phone out. And, you know, yeah. and that was a, there was also a sense of group responsibility. Because if I go down, then I'm bringing these guys down and they have a family. And, you know, so we're all kind of, we all have this unspoken rule, you know. Sure. Um, and it's a terrible way. Massage the truth. Right. And, and it's. It's not Catholic, right? It's, it, the Catholics went to their death uh, for the faith. Now, maybe they had to hide to say Mass, but when they were confronted or when they were speaking about something, they spoke the truth. And almost a year to the day, uh, he invited me to a conference. And he said, hey, we're going to this, this psychology conference. Uh, and we were working on a script about teenagers. And uh, it was about, actually, it was about addiction and things like that. And uh, he said, he said, we're struggling with these characters. Come to this conference with me, and it'll really help. I said, that's great. Oh man, the guy's got a master's degree in biology and psychology, and he's a, he's oh yeah, that's I love it. Let's go. That's fun. Well, we pull up, and he says, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this guy's a Catholic priest, and I'll never forget. I said, well, I won't, I won't hold that against him. <laughs> um, and so we go in, and it's at a friend's house, a friend of his who I knew casually uh, and there's maybe 20 guys there and the conference starts and I remember just kind of crossing my arms I wanted everyone to know that I didn't believe in any of this and I, so I crossed my arms and I put up all the guards and I sat there and listened um, intrigued but blocking it right sure uh, and then they got to one of the it was about the seven deadly sins they got to one particular seven deadly sin that was mine and I thought it was personal. I suddenly thought it was a setup. <laughs> your, your friends have got an intervention going on. I, I thought it was a Catholic intervention. It was so specific to me right. that it was, I, I took for granted that he must have sat down with this priest for an hour and told him everything he knew about me right. and then said, do your work, Father, and get this guy. That was the image in my mind because it was so precise. It was just Thomism, of course, and we all share human nature, and so it's going to look very personal. Uh, well, I got really angry. That's, that's my uh, mode of operation, and uh, I remember thinking, who am I going to fight? What's going on? And I was just so mad, and I confronted this priest on the balcony, and he had no interest in me, no idea who I was. It clearly wasn't a setup, right? Mm -hmm. He was smoking a cigar, and he's, right, right, and I'm trying to give him these really bad atheist arguments and why tell him why he's wrong and and he didn't even care to argue with me 
he would just give me these kind of one word answers or one sentence answers that were just the truth without any argumentation, right? And I remember just being so deflated and kind of um, the rug was pulled out from under me. And I stumbled back into the room kind of disoriented and everyone's laughing and they're eating hors d'oeuvres and talking amongst themselves. And I went, aha, this isn't about me. I, I'm mad because it's true. It just hit me that it was just true. Um, I sat back down and listened to the rest of the conference. And I, that night I asked my friend, so how does one become a Catholic? 